Hello everybody, I am Chip Walton. And I'm Vaughn Stewart, and we're from Northern Brewer. And this is Brewing TV, very special Brewing TV, the third annual Hop Madness, Hop Madness 2012. Yeah. What's happening today is in episodes past and Hop Madnesses past, we've done backyard hop brews. I personally didn't have many backyard hops. Vaughn has I didn't have any, zero. not this year. <laughs> so what we're doing is, we'll tell people what we're doing. We're, going, we're looking backwards, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, got some hops that I've been sitting on for a while. I'm a bit of a hop hoarder. Um, some Centennial Leaf, Simcoe Pellet, Simcoe Leaf, all from 2011, from last year. They're still in, you know, great shape. We're going to be making a double IPA with uh, these hops. And then we also made uh, a big Australian, like October Burton Ale IPA, Barley Wine. It's kind of a polyglot of concepts, but it's going to be good. So, two beers, one brew day, a bunch of hops, at least three pounds of hops, yeah. and some yard hops some from Mr. Don Osborne from last year. Y'all know Don O, so we're throwing everything we can at this beer. And look who else showed up, our good friend Brian Adams, just in time for the most epic part of this over the hop brew day. Grab a pint, sit back, relax, and prepare yourself for pure hop madness. making 10 gallons of what I'm calling just a hop explosion, double IPA, imperial IPA. It's uh, a really good base of, you know, two row, little Marisot or some English malt for character. Um, we've got some Belgian Munich in there. That's gonna add lots of malty character, darken it up just a little bit. There's a little torrified wheat for head retention. There's a little sugar to make it real dry. And then there's just a touch of really dark crystal for that kind of hint of toffee. All in all, it's a pretty standard, you know, West Coast-ish style double IPA. We did some, some Simcoe first wort hopping, do some more Simcoe to bitter, and then pretty much everything else just in the, in the end. And the end is a whole other thing that we'll, <laughs> we'll get to. Yeah, talk about the end. Let's all get right. to it. What's, uh, yeah, what's going on at the end of this thing? So it's... Um, it's kind of like a hybrid hop back concept. Um, it's something that I tried before with some, some wet hops, um, some wet Simcoe last year. The basic idea is you, you, know, you kill your boil and then you pump the wort. Um, I go through a hop rocket, so through a hop back up into another hop back, into usually a 10 gallon kettle with a false bottom that's packed with, with leaf hops. <laughs> yeah. And so it's like, it's double hop back. We'll get back to the hop explosion in a sec. While we're waiting for our mash to finish, Chip and I got to work on another beer. Why not? It's Hop Madness. This brew is an extract version of an Australian October ale, one of the predecessors to the modern IPA. These Burton ales and barley wines kind of evolved from an old English um, recipe concept called October ale, or October beer, and uh, it used to be made on, on estates they would basically use all of the freshest ingredients. They would use the freshest Maris Otter, they would use the freshest East Kent Goldings, and just use a lot of them. Usually age it for nine or 12 months. And so we took that concept of using really fresh ingredients, and we used uh, about 12 and a half pounds of Northern Brewer's Maris Otter syrup, which is you know super fresh, super new. Um, and then we used a bunch of Australian hops. You know, these Australian hops are pretty new on the scene, but they have a lot of really rich character, um, a lot of fruit and citrus and earth and all of that kind of character that you like in a barley wine. But they're super fresh. Yeah. Because the Southern Hemisphere harvest happens yeah. in you know June-ish. Yeah. There's uh, Australian Topaz and Australian Stella. Topaz is, it's, a, it's an old Australian variety actually. They've been growing it for a little while. They used to use it just to make it into hop extract, um, just kind of as a commodity hop. 
But then over the years, they were kind of figuring out, well, it's actually a pretty nice hop. If we just treat it right, don't like, you know, don't force it into extract. There's some corollaries being drawn between it and Amarillo. Right. I get some Simcoe and Chinook, that sort of dank resin character out of it. But there's also that underlying Southern Hemisphere earthiness. And then Australian Stella, Stella! <laughs> is newer to the scene, specifically really bred for aroma. Um, it's got some little hints of anise and licorice along with um, really just pleasant, hoppy, floral, almost classic European um, with some sort of Pacific Northwest Willamette, Mount Hood kind of character. So it looks like 23 and a half. It's pretty much on target. It's maybe a little low. We lost some volume to hops. It's perfectly fine. It's still a really big beer. You know, the, the October Ale, um, as a concept, I think I first read about it in uh, Randy Mosher's Radical Brewing. Uh -huh. He wrote a little bit about it. Um, but then more recently, I was reading this uh, IPA uh, by Mitch Steele. Um, Which is super rad. It's really, yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. It's really good. And he talks at length about how that's sort of how you can trace IPA all the way back to October Ale. So it's like October Ale, and then it kind of turns into Burton Ale, and then it kind of turns into IPA. And there's a lot of steps like along the way. That, yeah. So that's kind of that's where things sort of tie in. So there's a lot more behind the history of an IPA than a rickety ship. Yeah. Swaying on the Indian Ocean. With a lot of hops in it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you yeah. know, I mean, people have wanted hoppy beers forever. It's not yeah. like hops only came out of necessity for preservation. Right. We are not the first generation of craft beer lover. Yeah. <laughs> By yeah. far. Well, and two, you know, this book, there's a lot of like historical IPA recipes where. They're taking, if you think hop levels now are extreme, you can double or triple safely the hoppiest beers that are being made right now. Yeah. And those were the beers that were being made in the 1860s, 1870s. If you think you're a hop head now, you don't have anything on the 1800s. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Oh yeah, they smell epic. They smell really, really almost like harvest fresh. So this is great stuff. Pound number two, Centennial. These color differences can be from something as simple as just where they were grown, whether they're Oregon Centennial or Washington. All the lupulin is still still there. You can still see the, the glands are nice and sticky. They do just, they smell great. And that's really in some ways a lot more important than how they look. We're not using these for bittering. We don't care that much about their bittering potential. We just want to get that great aroma out of them in the hop back. Usually what I do is just run some sanitizer, you know, through the system. Cause I mean, this kettle's clean, but it's definitely not sanitized. And the hot word will hit it and kind of sanitize it. But just in case, you know, there's some nooks and crannies. Uh, we're just gonna hit it with some star sand and then run that through the system, generate a lot of foam. So at this point, we're gonna put some, uh, some Don Osborne Centennial, Yard Centennials. Um, these are really pretty nice, nice and fresh. They really, uh, they've got a little bit of that moist stem character that you get from fresh hops, even though they're what, like a little older. They've been, you know, they're in good shape. So I'm just gonna put about, about two ounces in the old rocket there. You know, badass loves his hops. Oh, he's not. Man, you said throw it in there. Over there. Sorry, sorry, sorry. You got sorry. The madness. I wanted to put it in there, but Sorry. I think I'll put it over there. Here I am. How long you let this rest, Vaughn? Uh, it's gonna be, you know, about 15 or 20 minutes, enough to really get some of that character picked up. And you can see now too, uh, the hot blocker is in the up position. So it's filtering those even more aggressively, although that's a good, 
That's a good island of hop on the top there, hop matter. We're gonna throw the lid on and let them sort of steep and pick up some aroma and flavor. Hot. <laughs> yeah, that's hoppy. Is it hoppy? Yeah, that's a little hoppy. It's good. That's what we want. <laughs> Let's see here, we've got these, all these Simcoe's and Centennials in here. I'm just gonna sort of make sure they're good and integrated mixed up. There's definitely a good inch or two of hops on the top that are just solid. And uh, yeah, it smells great, you know, just everything you'd expect from Simcoe and Centennial. Um, really rich, dank resin. Dank. Dank, bro. Yeah, this, you know, smells great, looks great. Uh, we're way high on gravity, so we're gonna lose some wort, but I'll probably just water back just a little bit if we have to make up some volume. So we're gonna throw open the valve and uh, see what happens. We're seeing the wort come into the, the receiving kettle um, a little bit slowly, even though both valves are open full bore and we got some gravity on our side. The main reason, other than the massive amount of hops that it's filtering through, it's also filtering through um, a false bottom that looks uh, Looks like this one here, button louvered, you know, really fine. So it's taking some time to drain, but that's just fine. It's making sure that we don't get too much sediment. 8.5 gallons. <laughs> so we started with about 11 at flame out, and we're at 8.5 right now. It's a good thing, you know, again, counted for the loss. We'll see what happens, see where the gravity's at. Might add some water, some filtered water. Um, if we've got the leeway, you know, but it's looking good so far. What yeast are you going to put in there? Uh, we're going to split it to uh, 1028 London Ale and the 1056 American Ale. 1056 obviously is a classic yeast for the style. 1028, you know, some of the great, some great double IPAs are made with it. Uh, great Lakes Lake Erie Monster mm. being one of them. Um, adds a little bit of mineral character, sort of a backbone. I'm a man. <laughs> man. End of brew day. How many gallons, Vaughn? Uh, this is about nine-ish gallons. You know. Another yeah. gallon over there. 1078? Yeah, there's another gallon in this three-gallon bag of hops. This is the wet hops that came out of the ultra hop bag. Yeah. Dude, we could probably squeeze this and get another gallon. Get sell it. it. Get a pail on that. But sell it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so long brew day. It's been a uh, eight hour brew day. It's a pretty long day, but it was cool. We got two big- 15 gallons. We got 15 gallons. Did you got these and the other ones? Nice. Big, yeah, big beers. Big beers. Thanks, Brian, for showing up. Yeah. Thanks for calling me. Props to Hop Union. Hop Union for some super awesome hops. Mm -hmm. Props to Northern Brewer. Props to Vaughn for the concept. Oh, that's good. Hope everybody's having a good harvest and hop madness season. Let us know what kind of things you did over the top hop goodness. Also, Mint Steel IPA is not to be missed. Put it on your holiday gift list. It's it's an awesome read. People are going bonkers over it, and we've all been chatting about it and obviously taking its concepts to heart. I'm about to dig in some hops, man. <laughs> Got my bowl, got my spoon. <laughs> Let's do this. Mm. Mm. Oh, oh man, dessert. Oh, oh, that that is good, good, man. You need another bite. <laughs> mm. Mm. Now that Brian's recovered, not too we're gonna hang out with this bottle of fresh hop from Indeed Brewing in uh, Northeast Minneapolis. That's where we're gonna do it. It's good stuff. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Off the brew. Brew for all. Brew for all. Smells good. Balanced with a little bit of malt, just a little sugar, a little sweetness. Y'all should try it sometime. Keeps you fit. Low calorie.
Maybe not low calorie. Got a lot of sugar. 1078, boy.